So the whole entire kit is 3D, completely 3D printed. I want someone to look at that and go, that's amazing, but it is only just lo like lugs. What's going on, everybody? Nick DiVirgilio hanging out with Dan Polovich of Panic at the Disco at the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Nicely done. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah, I've done this bad. a couple <laughs> times. And Dan has been uh, just cool enough to show us his brand new SJC kit and the rest of his rig. They're sound checking here at the, uh, for the gig tonight, so we got to go, go through this quickly. <laughs> but you have an quickly awesome... Quickly and calmly. Totally. We got this. We got it. You have an awesome new drum kit. Yeah. Please tell the folks what's going on with your kit, because it's different than pretty much anything else out there. Yeah, you're the first person uh, officially that we're really kind of like talking about it uh, with. Uh, so the whole entire kit is 3D, completely 3D printed, uh, except for the hoops. So listen, we were just listening <laughs> to your, your drum tech. Give us your drum tech's name again. Casey Irvin. Casey Irvin. Thank was, you, Casey. Thank you, Casey, man. You were, he was, you know, sound checking the drums. We Crushes it. I think he hits them harder than I do. Well, and you could, you could, <laughs> you could tell the drums sound full and round like drums oh, should. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, go up and, you know, show us some stuff around your kit. You have yeah. a lot of great stuff up there. The, these beautiful Zildjian cymbals, the amazing Remo heads, Roland TM2. Uh, we got a Porter and Davies kicker seat here. Yeah. I all would your, say, all I would your DW hardware and pedals? Yes, yeah, so all DW, DW yeah. hardware, extended footboards on the double pedals. Right. Um, just, you know, lo love it all. Couldn't do it without every, everybody involved, for sure. But basically, we, we took pretty stock um, uh, threaded inserts that you can find anywhere. They're just right. hexagonal inserts, right? Right. And I designed a channel that you could see from the outside. And those inserts would just slide in, and they're just sticking out the top, and you're good to go. It's just just like any other, like drum lug, lug pretty much, right. right? But obviously, the the lugs are part of the shell. So so all of these lugs, every single lug you see on this kit, is completely part of the shell, printed at one time. It comes out of the machine like that. There's some support material on there, but they can they can pop all that off within a few minutes. Um, but the challenge, one of the challenges this time, next to printing an entire kit was a different design of how those threaded inserts are installed. And it's, used, uh, it's a process called heat set or heat sink okay. inserts, which is basically you take a brass part or some sort of metal part, and you can take a basic soldering iron, you stick it in, uh, in or touch it to the metal part, uh, and as you just rest it on the plastic, it slowly melts the plastic and kind of seeps in there and all the, all the gooby wow. plastic kind of falls in. The, there's a bunch of geometry going on with these things wow. that makes it lock in harder, which is a, another huge complicated topic. Each one of these we tested up to 500 pounds, all the different designs we did, right. and every single one broke the plastic before the insert had any problem. Okay. And uh, we also tested the most ridiculous uh, tuning of a snare that could ever be done, and we were getting around 175 pounds at the most, but my friend who took those measurements was saying no one in their right mind would ever tune a snare that tight. Um, so we're talking about well beyond marching snare tensions sure. and stuff like that. Um, so 500, so beyond 500 pounds for every single one of these, we're not worried about them sure. at all, right? Um, yeah. So, so uh, basically, a, a friend of mine, Bernie Solo, who I met pretty recently, actually Mike from SJC introduced me to him. Okay. He has a, he has a, uh, his own shop in Michigan. Uh, he actually came to the show last night in Detroit. Okay. He handmade in his shop every single one of these 88, I believe 88 inserts plus extra, took him, I believe, 25 to 30 minutes per to make. Wow. Every single one in my hand, because one of the larger companies that would make, that would mass manufacture these, one, they needed a ridiculous number of, on the order, right. and two, the, their turnaround time was like so long that we couldn't risk it, and we just got lucky enough that Bernie Solo was able to make that happen within our time frame. So again, handmade every single one of those. It was Killer. the first thing that made this kit even, we, we almost just weren't gonna do it. Sure. Um, and he made that whole thing possible, so thank you, Bernie. Um, and that was, that was right around the time that me and Mike just started discussing this. And Mike from SJC has always been extremely supportive of this 3D drums thing. Okay. Even though I'm not, I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking about it from a business perspective, I just wanted to see if it was done, sure. if it was fun for me to do. Um, and I think we were both initially, you know, three years ago before the pandemic, we're planning to do a whole kit of the original design, right? And then everything kind of came back around again. And I'm like, you know, maybe it'd be really fun 
if Mike was down to like build a SJ, do a SJC 3D, 3D printed kit, sure. which just means we need, we need to get his lug CAD files, that lug design, that shield lug design, which right. is so beautiful. Um, we need to figure out how to get that in CAD, clean up really nice so it's ready for 3D printing, uh, which was a, a long and super fun process. We also enlarged the lugs in the CAD program okay. by about 15%, right. which me and Mike both went over together. Had a lot of fun, you know, picking that one, um, and yeah, and ended up. He was stoked about it. Basically, He's I brought I brought it up to him. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So I brought it up to him. He was super stoked on the idea, and uh, him and his team at SJC were there the whole entire time. Um, it was basically all uh, mathematics, measurements, emails, uh, phone phone conversations, Zoom meetings, and all this stuff. Uh, working hand in hand again with uh, Stratasys Direct Manufacturing in California, who printed the kit. Um, but all of this stuff was just, it was, it was like day after day after day after day for months on end, um, working out all these details because in the end, the ultimate challenge of doing something like this, it wasn't necessarily if we wondered if it would work or if it would make sounds when it was done. Right. It was, did we think of every last thing we possibly could right. so that when these come out of the oven, uh, which is 3D printing in this case is actually, right. it's kind of like an oven, it has to right. keep them at temperature, that they were going to be right. Because also every single bracket uh, spur that's on these kits, those holes were designed into the design. Gotcha. So there's no post cutting anything. Every hole for the insert was already in the print. Um, even the... What about, if you don't want to ask him, no, no, go the, for it. the edges? Yeah, the edges are printed as well. But I mean, like the, they're 40, typical 45 40, degree? 45, 45. I, uh, are they sharp? Yes. Okay. Uh, you, can, you can see the layer print lines, and, and every, every, every here and there, there's okay. maybe like just a little bump or something like one right. layer line of a bump. But for now, we've always just wanted to embrace how they come out of the machine. Okay. We don't touch them in post. So the way these sound, there, oh, hasn't, been, there okay. hasn't been any hand no sanding, sanding or anything like even the, um, the, uh, the bearing at um, the snare bed, the, the snare bed. Yeah. even that was designed. Cool. The, and a lot of these were designed on the, pre, uh, the original snares, right. so some of it was existing, but we had bigger fish to fry with this one, sure. putting SJC's lugs on it. Right. It's, you know, you take one design, but then you realize, well, you know, the, the kick drum ones have a, the kick drum lugs are taller than the tom lugs. We also actually designed their gaskets, their gasket measurements into the, to the, to the, the design. I was thinking like, they look cool. If, if you just made them the same color and everything, like, sure. you know, it looks really beefy. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. So, and it, nice, <laughs> perfect timing. So yeah, so we, des we designed, designed those in there, which their gaskets for the kick are bigger than the Tom and all that stuff. And it's just, like I said, just wall to wall details. Sure. What landed you on the color of the kit? So I, uh, when we, it was funny because we didn't think about that until the very end. Okay. Uh, but then when I started getting down to it, it's like, well, what colors of filament do we have available? Um, red was obviously one of them. It's pretty much just simple rainbow colors. Okay. The, the world is your oyster with other types of printing, but with this FDM style of printing, your colors are more limited for now. Um, but I, I've always been a huge fan of that, the, the anti, uh, kind of antique Duco. Sure. Duco no, design. Yeah, you bet. So you got your black and gold and uh, your uh, blue and silver, stuff like that. And then there's some kits you can find that are the red and gold, which okay. I've always been a huge fan of. We lucked out that the ASA filament was a darker red, but this is, that's a good question, because this is, um, the red is all the color of the filament. So none of the red on this kit is actually the paint. Um, and then the, the gold, the gold was done. Actually, that's another crazy thing about the print too, is like when the factory in uh, Valencia, uh, Stratus is direct manufacturing, when they were done printing them, we had to ship them right off. I mean, everything next day air to SJC on the East Coast, okay. to, their, to their facility so they could uh, put everything to uh, do the paint, put everything together. Um, and then eventually, well, actually sound test them. They also sound test them, sure. which was awesome. <laughs> they were the first ones to hear it actually, which was funny. Uh, before I even ever right. heard the drums, like SJC heard them on the East Coast. Um, so yeah, so they, they put the paint on, they did the hoops, uh, shipped it back to us just in time for a few rehearsal days, and then we came and here and did the whole thing, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, what yeah. a cool thing. It's a really unique drum kit to check out. I can't wait to hear it in the, in the room tonight at the show. It looks awesome. 
your mic setup. You have a very typical mic setup, a lot of Shure mics here. You have SM7B in between your, yep. your floor and yeah, your right snare. Yeah, right here. I'm taking that to get some of the crack of the snare drum. Uh, you, know, you know, it's that's more of like we. Uh, I think people in studios are technically are they're normally calling that like the crotch mic or the crush mic. Right. Um, it picks up a little everything. Bit of everything. They okay. they hit it. They tend to hit it so hard with like some sort of limiting, like an eleven seventy six or something. Right. It gets a lot of character, and that's one of those things you just kind of blend in. I got gotcha. A very little bit. And what about your your over your head mic here? Yes, the Shure. Uh, what do we got here? VP eighty eight. I love this Shure mic because it's a. Uh, um, it's all mid-side, and it has a, a mid-side decoder inside the microphone, okay. and you can do like a, a widespread, it's, it's basically how, how loud that side signal, I believe, is turned up. You have three options. Right. Or you can do raw mid-side, which has to be decoded at the board. We just do like the middle setting on uh, the, the pre-decoded side, so he just gets a stereo, okay. um, a stereo uh, signal. But what's so cool about it is because it's all mid-side, it's completely mono-compatible. So anyone, anywhere who is hearing any of this mic, it doesn't matter where they are in the venue, oh, okay. it'll, it, they'll hear the same thing. And if you're in a sweet spot, you'll hear yeah. it in perfect stereo, yeah. but otherwise it collapses per into perfect mono. Cool. It's killer, man. Yeah, it's so, fu it's so fun. I mean, this is like, it's like a, like a ro robot kit <laughs> with all these microphones and, 3D printed and all this crazy stuff going on, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, sort of, it's so, high so tech. Fun. Yeah, good. It's, it's but I mean, the whole show is so big too. Like, sure. oh my gosh. Sometimes I'll just like walk around and like look at like a box that has 20 cables coming out of it that aren't microphone cables, 20 switches on it. People will be like, you shouldn't be touching that. But <laughs> um, it's just crazy. Like, think about every single cable that has to be hooked up right. and working for a show like this to oh, happen. Yeah, and, Unreal. And they, you guys just played last night in Detroit, so they know how to. Yeah, it's crazy. They, they, they know yeah. how to yeah. set it up, tear it down immediately. Uh, you're doing a few triggering bits. You have a rolling pedal and a couple of things. So yeah, that's the, the KT10. Yeah. yeah, we're using the TM2, which is funny. There's 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 only the two uh, ins, right? right? But you, but they, they're both uh, dual zone, right. right? So you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. The KT10, I believe, requires a dual zone. But then if you break out like the other one into a, you know, a, 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 a Y cable, yeah. then I, we can run these two uh, bar pads, which just it keeps the setup just as simple sleek, as simple as yeah. we can, simple sleek, but it's as powerful as any unit. Sure. You know, you could ever you could ever have. Right. You can do all the same things on that little thing that you can with right. anything else. And also one night we had the kick head broke, like this was years ago. And we realized that night how long it takes to change a kick head during a show. Uh, yeah. Really long, yeah. right? It's crazy. We, we started coming up with- happen to me we started, gig once. we started coming up with new ideas based off of that night. Uh, and one of them was, I, I took a recording of the drums, that I, the kick and the snare that I was using for that um, tour, right. uh, processed them a little bit and I put those samples on there. It's, it's our oh shit. Our, <laughs> uh, Just in case. Yeah, our yeah. oh shit kit on there. Yeah, yeah. So if I lose either my snare head or that, I can switch to that real quick and I can play the bar pad in the KT10, and, and which you. feels like yeah. a Those real cool kick pedals. pedal, by the yeah. way. It's yeah. awesome. Those are great. Um, yeah. What else well, you got, man? man. I, I could go on for hours. <laughs> No, that's it. that's it. We just wanted to see this new, really cool kit. It's obviously a one-of-a-kind, unique thing. Yeah. Thanks so much for spending the time and getting into the details with this. I mean, it's SJC is always like on the cutting edge of stuff. It's, it's cool to talk to Mike. Absolutely. He always just has so much excitement when he talks about his drums. Yep. And 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 working with the artists directly, like yourself. You know, he really kind of. Oh, gets I'm into so it. lucky, man. Yeah. They're I mean, really me, cool me like and this. Mike were like back and forth. Like it was like text basis. Yeah. Sometimes we'd have like 30 texts in a day sure. trying to figure this thing out. But Mike, like I said, has been nothing but supportive the That's whole killer. entire time with this. And I couldn't be happier to like be working with SJC on something that it, it, that is so cutting edge. Sure. At, at times it was crazy too, thinking about what we were, we were doing. And it, I'm seeing all their other kits rolling out, all these gorgeous yeah. kits, like super creative kits. And we're working on this 3D printed kit that otherwise is just like a traditional kit. Right. All that we wanted to accomplish was to to prove that it can be done and hang with any kit that's ever been made before. Wow. From there, I, I believe Mike would feel the same way. Is we want to see what the feedback is and what other people what think of. Because I want are. someone to look at that and go, "That's amazing," but it is only just l like lugs. Right. From there, you could imagine anything could be printed sure. on there. You know.
So, well, cool, man. Thanks yeah. so much. I know you got to get Thank going. Thank you and it's Sweetwater for, your... for the rig rundown. Yeah, of course, man. It's can't so wait to see sick. The show I love rig rundowns. Awesome. Yeah, heck yeah. And awesome. can't wait for the show tonight. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, brother.